Hello YouTube, this is MK Vine, and um, I'm going to be doing a rebuttal to Cobain's video on St. Cyprian and the Papacy, and uh, Seton's H411 has uh, asked me to read his rebuttal um, to Cobain, so I'm just going to be reading what he said, and here it goes. Um, a few clarifications are evidently needed before getting into the nitty gritty. Given Cobain's very retrieved response to the issue of the rebaptism controversy and yet very bigoted response to me, the fact is Protestants, particularly 20th century Anglicans and some Orthodox on YouTube, I'm thinking specifically a former user now Pilgrim 1411 as Orthodox videos, who used the rebaptism controversy to conclude that Cyprian has some sort of extreme disrespect for Stephen and for your information it is a common claim that Cyprian at one point tried to excommunicate Stephen. That being said, Cobain, I'm happy your errors didn't go that far. In reading the title of my original video, Cobain says that autocephalus simply means orthodox. A quick reply, as this video will show, autocephalus refers to the Eastern churches who call themselves orthodox, but who are not in the purest sense orthodox. At 27 seconds, Cobain says Cyprian would have supported, wouldn't have supported the Vatican councils. I never said that Cyprian's views were that of Vatican I or Vatican II. It is a common fact that these councils rely heavily on Cyprian's ecclesiology though, and further that there is strong accord between modern Catholic ecclesiology and that of Cyprian, but I certainly never said that he supported a fully developed papacy, and to speak this way about my video is inaccurate. At 32 seconds, Cobain says that this is Orthodox ecclesiology. Cobain outlines the Orthodox Ecclesiology, which has for its highlights that a. Every bishop sits on Peter's chair and b. That Christ's words to, to Peter apply to all bishops. No problems here. Catholics agree, to Cobain's surprise I'm sure. There is no problem with this understanding as stated. The question is, is this to be understood on a universal level of the church or the local level? The only way in which this position and Cobain's argument, as we will see, is to be successful in tearing down a Catholic view of ecclesiology is if this is on the universal level for this is already the Catholic view on the regional level does he think that this is the way the church operates on a universal level he gives no indication in his video but suffice to say surely not for that would be a truly absurd position to hold two obvious problems among many would be that individual bishops disagree and run into heresy all the time Yet our Lord promised that the ultimate unity of the church should not be prevailed against, and thus, given this conception, no individual bishop should be capable of falling into ill teaching. He no doubt cannot see this structure universally though, as the entire autocephalous conception of the church depends on there being no such visible presence of it, and if that strikes you as problematic, uh, how is the body of Christ to function as a whole if it is not guaranteed as a whole, then you're right. To a further point, Cyprian himself is a higher bishop than just a local bishop. He is a regional bishop who himself attempted and enacted excommunications as well as counseled and gave orders to other bishops. <clears throat> Much time is spent on his initial definition for this reason. Because Cabane cannot say that any of this structure applies to the ecclesiology on the universal level, he has no means of arguing against the Catholic conception. Then dialectically, he's left in a fairly humble position of only being able to say that I've misrepresented Cyprian for the rest of the video, which he no doubt believes I have. In this video I will show that I haven't, that Cyprian's ecclesiology is only possible in a Catholic ecclesial hierarchy and not, an, not, in, not on an autocephalous one. The Catholic position is that Jesus Christ is the absolute head of the church who sends the Holy Spirit to protect it on earth who protects the original apostolic lineage of Peter, now Pope, and the Apostles, now Bishops. <clears throat> At 53 seconds through 1 minute 27 seconds, Cobain says that what Christ says to Peter applies to all. Here Cobain quotes Cyprian but does not give the source. It is difficult to, for me to see where Cobain thinks this quotation supports him. The part of the quote where Cobain is excited about it is, quote, our Lord, whose precepts and warnings we ought to observe, determining the honor of a bishop and the ordering of his own church, speaks in the gospel and says to Peter, after quoting 
Matthew 16, 18 to 20. Thence the ordination of bishops and the ordering of the church runs down along the course of time and line of succession, so that the church is settled upon her bishops, and the and every act of the church is regulated by the same prelates. After all the preaching about context and research, surely Cabane, you should know to list your sources. Cabane, I invited Cabane to tell me where he got it from in the comments section to a long and, as I predicted, mysterious wait. For the online sources on Protestant blogs seldom ever, seldom if ever match up the primary sources. That being said, the quote as it stands does not play does not place the bishop as authoritative equals nor the bi nor the apostles as authoritative equals only that the church has its bishops and is self-governed by bishops both claims catholics already affirm locally uh, 1 minute 38 seconds uh, Cabane says from peter proceeds to all Cabane says that this is a problem for the catholic because using this suspicious quote he concludes that therefore the church is founded on all its bishops and not just the bishop of Rome. Catholics already affirm this. This in no way shows the pivotal point that you need to make, that Cyprian here believes that all bishops stem equally from Peter, equally in his authority as shepherd, equally in his unifying person, and that all apostolic lineages were equal. Only by the substantive proof of all these points can one go on to show that Cyprian's ecclesiology as working via autocephalacy. Yet, as we will see, Cyprian does not believe the unity of the church is determined in the same way by each bishop and the church. Cyprian says in his 54th epistle that Rome's throne of Peter is the chief principal church and the intrinsic source of unity of the authority in the church. We further know that there is a unifying feature to Cyprian's ecclesiology which is not in absolute being identical to the individual summation of its bishops, but to the chair the bishops have and hold to. Quote, this unity we Ought firmly hold to and assert, especially those of us who are that are bishops who preside in the church, that we may also prove the episcopate itself to be one and undivided. Unquote, on Unity five, this one unity is Peter, which over the other apostles, the apostles themselves in their own authority were guided by, and Cyprian in other places, and that we will discuss describes Rome as its pinnacle, matrix, root, and place and womb of the church. Cabane's next point at 1 minute 45, which evidently you think leads from the, these previous two, is that Cyprian himself writes that he sits on Peter's chair in giving us his source this time, Epistle 43. However, Cyprian sa does say elsewhere that he sits on Peter's chair, lo Peter's chair locally, and unless Cabane is going to produce a quote in which this is a universal context, he is again going to be restricted by his traditions restriction to give definition of the universal level of the church in invisible, arbitrary, autocephalous, and oftentimes absent terms. Due to this, and according to distinguished theologian George, George uh, Florovsky, Orthodox e ecclesiology still finds itself in pre-theological stage, in a pre-theological stage. Cabane is therefore empty-handed and is not arguing from a position his approach has defined, or even that his theologians agree with. To cite the approach of the very high-ranking Orthodox theologian Nicholas Afanasiev, the Orthodox of the Orthodox Theological Institute in Paris, he says, quote, "The terms universal ecclesiology, universal church, according to the best teaching and doctrine of the Eastern Orthodox Church, none of these terms are acceptable. They are false names, misnomers. Universal ecclesiology presupposes an addition of local churches." that make the universal church and its related ecclesiology. There is no such thing as a universal church, as one of the main orthodox theologians in the West would have said, one in one in ecclesiology will make only one." Unquote. And this is from Rusk, Basic Ecclesiological Problems, East and West, page pages 80 and 81. At 3 minutes and 3 seconds, Cabane says that every bishop has complete liberty and full power and cannot judge. Cabane here uses a very awkward quotation of the seventh uh, of the seventh council of Carthage. In fact, I was unable to find any reference that used exactly his words except in YouTube videos where Cabane was the commentator. However, when one reads a concordance, 
or more scholarly translation, we find a completely different rendering and one that in no way is against the Catholic position. This is relevant for this is the only proof text for the autocephalous ecclesiology as such in the entire video. Scholars Shaft and Wallace in ANF Volume 5, a very respected translation, translation does not render the text with the unanimity that is absolutely essential to Cobain's assertion. Schaff relates the same text as, quote, Since every bishop, according to allowance of his liberty and power, has his own proper right of judgment, unquote. Notice the absence of the words complete and full in the text. It just so happens, and an absolutely pivotal point, that these are the only words which are contrary to the Catholic, Catholic position in this text, and Cobain has added them ex nihilo in what seems vain deceit. Further, I answered the bit about judgment in my first video. Cyprian's position is that rebaptism is an opinion about which bishops are free to disagree according to their allowance. For Stephen, this was not an opinion but a sacramental doctrine. The source of the problem is that for Cyprian it's an opinion and for Stephen it's a doctrine. Cabane's only proof text is thus swept out from under him by a context which does not allow for one to say that doctrin doctrinally no bishop can judge one another, one or another. It is also worthwhile to mention that Cabane fails to tell his readers the telling variants in this text. Not only is there a variant in the term bishop a bishop and, and questions to be raised about the proper rendering of it, see Jurgen's faith of, faith of the Early Fathers. Mansi also leaves out the term essay. Further problematic would be the ancient rendering of the text as relied on by the well-known Constantinoplian scholar Zonaris was very different as Zonaris's rendering changes the text significantly. As Schaff notes, quote, these words are omitted, are omitted in Zonaris's, Zonaris's Greek the very gist of the matter for the Easterners. Uh, 504 and 505 Council of Carthage. The variants are thus threefold. For no one A of us has set himself up, B to be bishop, C of bishops. Zonaris's reads, even granting the S.A. variant, no one has set himself to be, no one has set himself up to be bishop, unquote. I will not speculate on what the original rendering was, but it is clear it is not as cut as, as cut and dry and to present it as a proof text for anything is foolish. It is however clear that the text appears in Cyprian's words locally to the other bishops and he is not unhappy that Stephen and he is unhappy that Stephen has attempted to teach the others on something which was not essential doctrine and thus out of his chair. 20th century Anglican apologists have tried to use Cobain's same, em same empty argument as Giles relays of them, quote, both Puller II and Batifibble III have read into these remarks of Cyprian the idea that the Bishop of Rome has claimed to be Bishop of, Bishop, Bishop of Bishops, but all that Cyprian actually says is that no African Bishop claims such, unquote. E. Giles, Document 47, Council of Carthage, Carthage 1st September uh, 256. The text cannot be used as the primary text of the interpretation of the whole of Cyprian. It is to be understood in exactly the context it appears, in a local council in which Cyprian does not see the matter as essential matter of doctrine, nor therefore is he attempting to teach or discuss doctrine here, as all have the privilege of opinion of judgment in this case. But no excommunications or denunciations occurred after, and if Stephen were contradicting any fundamental aspects of the faith or the church, if you know anything about Cyprian, you know that he would have acted against him. At 3 minutes 27 seconds, Cobain says, Pseudo-History and Gregory. Cobain says that no historian would support my supposed pseudo-history of Cyprian, saying that Cyprian never would have supported the papacy of Gregory VIII. I laughed when Cobain said this. In my video, I said nothing about Gregory VIII, and you give no citation of the scholar you quoted, what exactly he is talking about or even what he said so I cannot comment on your statements there. Only that it should be obvious to you that a single scholar does not speak for all, especially if it's William Webster. Cabane has clarified that 
in the comment section he meant Gregory the seventh but his comments there and in the video are red herrings